Hi everyone, it's Peter from Brewbetter. Thought I'm gonna make a video today on the steam valve, which goes in a dripping steam wand all the time on, on the Gadget Classics and also on the Gadget Classic Pros. This is a design issue in the valve itself. I have a service available refurbishing these, allowing to open up and clean the valve whenever it requires a good clean. This normally prolongs the lifetime of uh, such a valve for, for many, many years without dripping. I'm gonna use tools like Phillips head screwdriver, a five millimeter Allen key, 17 millimeter spanner, a file. It is important to have a safe edge or a blunt edge. I'm also using a needle file, tweezers, adjustable spanner or a five eighth spanner. <clears throat> A die of quarter inch, uh, 19 TPI, and cordless drill, some sandpaper, fine grip. I think this is, yeah, 600 what I'm using. And you will need a new o ring to fit the valve back to the boiler. This is a BS 110 in size, and also a new internal o ring. This is a BS 008 and a quarter inch lock nut with at least six millimeter diameter hole at the end. Some food grade silicone grease for the o-rings. Yeah, let's dive in. Obviously, first thing first, unplug your machine. Remove the two Phillips head screws from the back. Open the pull up the rear of the top section and pull the top towards the back to get it released from the front bracket. Once it is loose, it's a good idea to remove the top, the top lid, and also the bolts. I also like to use the lid upside down as a tray for all the parts I'm removing from the machine and then just unplug, unplug the oh yeah I've already had this disconnected so disconnect the earth terminals from the lid there is a tiny latch on the spade connector to push in in order to release it well this is one of my prototypes Turners doesn't really matter in this case. So we are removing the steam knob. Sometimes it could be stuck on the spindle. What you can do in that case, you can pry it off with a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver from the inside. get it loose and you could also pry it between the probably from the other end zoom in a bit so pry it in between the plastic disc and the knob itself to release it once you removed it be careful sometimes the spring clip just flies out from the knob. Well, not in this case, I can't even remove it. No, there is a metal spring clip. Then, grab a 17 mm spanner and just loosen the lock nut. Undo it. Oh, worth to mention, prior to removing the steam valve, before you open in the lock nut, make sure you depressurize the boiler by opening the steam valve for a second or so, just in case there is any built up pressure in the boiler. It is also a good idea to make, uh, to remove it whenever the machine is cold. 
metal. Undo the down tube. Obviously this is a classic Pro, but uh, the task is identical on the on an older Gadget Classic. And then just get your 5mm Allen key. These bolts could be these bolts could be fairly sized in, so well not in this one, this is an unused machine. Undo those bolts. There we are. And then the tricky bit is to remove it because uh, the steam valve has a nipple going into the boiler, the hole on the top of the boiler and uh, this is the very top section of the boiler obviously so it keeps getting wet and dries off due to heat and getting wet and dries off again so this is the most prone part uh, to calcification build up and normally that's why it could be quite a tough job to remove uh, the valve what you start with you start to wobble the valve sideways and then while wobbling it to the side prying it as close as close to the connection point as you can and then suddenly it will come loose. Normally what you see a lot of calcification scale build up here and also just get this out of the way around that hole but actually there is some in here oh yeah the boiler is filled with water so you you can see some scale there. I like to clean this uh, mating face up a bit if it is really scaled up either with a wire brush or uh, some sandpaper or you can just clean it with citric acid solution also the nipple could be cleaned with a wire brush anyway I'm gonna soak the valve into citric acid solution so that could be do done at a later point yeah normally you have an o-ring which I just removed before I started to shoot the video then get your wise and clamp it ideally this should be as square as it could be it will be important when you using the die to cut the thread as parallel, as, as square as you can. It could be fairly tight. As from factory these are creamed. So we are going to file off the crimp pin in order to release the, the spindle. I know some people prefer to use a dreamer, dreamer tool. Um, I think I can do a better job with the file. That, that is where it's important to use a file with a safe edge or blunt edge and what you do, we just start to file it all the way around
what you notice there I have already reached to the point where the, there is a breast collar around the spindle and when you can that starts to become visible that means we are really close so from that moment I start to go as even as I can to leave a square finish at the end of the wall and I only remove a tiny bit more material to keep the original width thickness of that collar or dress washer could you just say once you are there just refit your steam knob when fitting the knob there is a flat surface of the hole and there is the spring the tensioner spring the spring always tensions the curved and the curved side of the spindle so the flat profile meets the flat profile of the spindle and then just undo it you, you heard it cracking loose So that's your breast collar or washer. Right now what I like to do is to give it a bit of chamfer at the bottom end. So not on the side where you see the marks of the file, but the other untouched side. The outer edge should be somewhat chamfered. That will that will make it easier to refit it whenever you finish and assembling the wall again that's it <clears throat> put it to a side and then just undo the spindle so that's your spindle the reason o-ring that is the BS008 size this one is brand new it has never been used well it's sitting for a while now it's four years old the machine is and what you see there that's the cone the business end of the spindle and that cone meets a hole at the bottom of the valve and from time to time <coughs> scale building up on the cone and also in the wall seat and also what happens this is a breast to breast uh, valve so you can see please focus a shiny mark on the cone that very that is where uh, it meets the edge of the hole and when tightening up the wall the soft press against the soft press there will be a kind of groove on the cone and there will be a chamfer compressed uh, into the hole and as the mating surface uh, enlarges by a lot by that making a chamfer there and a groove here there is possibility for scale to build up on that surface and that will cause uh, imperfect seal so normally a good clean would solve the dripping but what I also do I repolish the cone I will show you in a minute and myself I also uh, re-machine the bottom the seat of the valve but for now I will also deborah just get rid of the sharp edges Yep. Yeah. 
and um, grab the quarter inch 19 TPI die and that's where you want to go really really square to the valve so keep checking the level of the die I know you should go, should go one turn and reverse half turn, but I prefer to go half a turn and turn and reverse a quarter. The thread will be quite shallow, however, it is still more than enough to lock the lock nut in place once we finish. The lock nut is needed to avoid the valve to be able to undo completely. So when you open in the valve, without that crimping, as we filed that off, you could, uh, in theory, you could undo the complete spindle and once the, temp uh, the boiler temperature is on 150 C then uh, steam would just escape there through that hole without any, uh, without any option of control so that's why we are using the lock nut to keep it as safe as it was from the factory whenever we machine in these I mean repolishing the cone or either Remachine in the valve seat, you need to bear in mind there is a shoulder in there, and uh, that means there is only a certain point until you can screw the spindle in. You have 3 mm to play with, so once the spindle gets 3 mm shorter, the cone won't reach the valve seat anymore. So you could either, if you need to remachine both the, the cone and the valve seat, you, you should not remove more than a mil from there and more than two mil from there. I think the valve seat is uh, more problematic because the, the chamfer you can compress there would require quite some depth to remove. Meanwhile, to repolish the cone you shouldn't really lose more than a mil. It is important to use a clean and totally flat surface and then so a glass sheet is probably the best or a nice and flat tile first thing first what you can do is to check the spindle if it's true so checking the spindle to be true by spinning it and then when touching the sandpaper with the cone you should match the original angle of the cone that is easy to reach by having a look at the, the impress or the marks of the press on the sandpaper as this one was brand new it didn't take a lot to get rid of the mark the, the tiny groove what was there but obviously if you have an older wall which uh, you possibly over tightened or the previous owner over tightened a few times throughout the years especially when it starts to leak then it takes a bit more remachining the valve seat, I'm, I'm not going to show you how to do that because uh, 
it is quite a tricky task and it's definitely not a safe one. I do have a 5mm end mill and I'm gonna remove some material from the wall seat. I will link, uh, I will uh, put in some photos which uh, we have of a cutaway wall to let you un understand what, what's going on there. So I, I remove some material from the wall seat so the chamfered hole profile will be recovered to a nice and straight cut hole, hole profile. Yeah, you need a, a special tool to, to hold the valve in place and to remachine the bottom dead square, otherwise it will leak anyway. Yeah, just in case you do so, make sure you measure the original distance, the original depth of the hole and not to exceed the original depth by a couple of millimeters. I'll just grab a wire brush, copper, uh, brass, brass wire brush, clean the nipple. Mechanical cleaning is always better if you can do it without damaging the actual coating. So brass brush is perfect to do so. then we can soak it to citric acid solution. I, know I normally use 5% solution, so uh, 5 grams of citric acid into 100 grams of boiling water. That's enough uh, normally to dip both into a small jug or glass. Make sure you remove the, the o-ring if you are submerging the stem into citric acid and leave it soak for about 15 to 20 minutes. If your valve is really bad, you see a lot of uh, scale built up uh, inside, then you can repeat the process. I also use some small brushes uh, to brush it out. Assembly, put your new o-ring on the spindle, get some food grade silicone grease on it, all the way in grab your collar and your lock nut I like to press it back with the lock nut if I can yes sometimes it is quite difficult Obviously, especially if you are on camera. So the color is in place now, nice and flush. And the lock nut, make sure you tighten it properly. Remember, this is a safety feature. So this is to prevent undoing the spindle while the machine is heated up and there is a bar or a bar and a half of steam pressure in your machine. So this could be fairly tight. Then add the new add the new o-ring 
to the other end, onto the nipple, and fit it back to the machine in a second. Before fitting it back to the machine, make sure to add some silicone grease to the to the big o-ring as well. Because of the lock nut, your black disc won't fit anymore unless you get rid of those. I think you only need to get rid of every second one of those flanges, probably, and then it would fit over again. But uh, it's, it is not necessary to fit it back. Stick it in place. Add your bolts. Do not tighten it up yet. Instead, fit the steam knob. Remember the flat profile goes to the flat side of the spindle. And keep it centralized while you are tightening the bolts that is to avoid the metal edge of the case making marks on your steam knob Team wand assembly. If you have a pro, then you have an o-ring at the end of the steam tube. You can also add some silicone grease onto that if you wanted to. Circuit. Ah, uh, yeah, the lock nut loves to fire down. <laughs> Playful that is. You can adjust the position of the steam tube to centralize it to the hole at the bottom if you wanted to while tightening up the nut. And then if you have removed your heating element wire, just make sure to reattach it. I recommend to Turn the machine on for heating up, even for uh, steam temperature. You will hear some hissing over the con around the connection, but that would only be to, due to some initial uh, drops of water escaping and uh, evaporating from there. But uh, once it's gone for a few seconds, then you should stop hearing any hissing noise. Then that means you have a perfect seal there. And that's all done. Now we only need to reconnect our earth wires to the lid. Then introduce the front of the top plate between the flanges of this support bracket. It is quite tricky if you have a Shades PID on your machine or any PIDs with the two SSRs, but it is manageable. And then once it's in place, at the front you can bend the funnel assembly to aim the end of the funnel into the cutout at the bottom. Which I'm struggling to, yeah, finally get there. I prefer to stick the lid in place first prior to introducing these screws because I from time to time I have a screw falling down the funnel and that's gonna end up in your water reservoir it's not a good fun and that's all done plug in your machine and enjoy hopefully a leak free <coughs> drip free steam wand 
in order to maintain uh, prolonged use you only should close your steam valve ever so slightly so tightening it up you remember we'll compress the breast parts and we'll have to remachine it again and that will increase the chance of uh, dripping so whenever you close in just keep that in mind you only should close it just to avoid dripping at the one end otherwise you will have to keep cleaning it and servicing it uh, all the time you can only service it a few times I mean if you remachine in the cone or remachine in the wall seat you, you only have about two or three chances to service it whenever you develop a, uh, a slight leak it normally helps if you just uh, clean the valve 